Welcome to The Wind Show. If like our team, you're naturally curious, passionate about Worcestershire, and take delight in gaining new knowledge, and above all, love to hear about the brilliant businesses and the innovation strengths that we have in the county, then this show is for you. Have you ever wondered who is behind the name? What their mindset is all about? What inspired them to get their invention to market? We were curious as well. So we decided to investigate and discover more about some of the names behind Worcestershire's fantastic innovations. From Edward Alger, William Morris, Sir Roland Hill, genius thrives in this county. They had a vision and the motivation to make their dreams and ideas a reality. So let's find out more about the people pioneering today. Simon, where are you? In light of the recent lockdown, we're having to do things a little bit differently. And so we're holding these interviews virtually. So today I'm joined by Sean Harris from Rotorhub. Thank you, Simon. It's uh, great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So Sean, what is the innovation behind your business idea? So the innovation behind what we do is based on my corporate experience. I had 23 years in the corporate world and I was responsible for putting the right people in the right place at the right time for big companies. That took a lot of money and a lot of expertise. I've captured that expertise and I've created a system and a process to pass on to SMEs to make sure that they can tap into that market without the multi-million pound budgets that the, the big boys have. In layman's terms, what does Rotorhub do? So Rotorhub is the UK's first total workforce management solutions company. We bring together all elements of WFM and we bundle all this up into a package that we provide to clients as a subscription-based service. So we do all the digital time and attendance, we do all the digital lead management, we do all the things like um, expenses, collations, and all the, all the paperwork that you generally have lots of people in the back office to do. We create automated systems and processes to actually bring all of that together in one place easily acceptable, secure, and in a digital environment, but we do all the work for you as well and make sure that we do everything for you as part of our subscription service. And what does this mean for Worcestershire? So I class Worcestershire as a hub because Worcestershire theoretically is the hub of the, of the UK, whereas we can go anywhere from Worcestershire. Worcestershire is a lovely central place where the West Midlands is on our doorstep. We've got the M5 on our doorsteps, we've got the M42, we've got the M1, we've got the M6. And it's a cracking place to be um, in order to, for all SMEs throughout the UK to take, it, to take advantage of what we do. But more for Worcestershire, Worcestershire itself is that people in Worcestershire, we've been working very closely with them in the last three years that we've been running and we've been... been checking what they actually want and designing and giving solutions for a Worcestershire market because this is the time that we've been able to spend quality time with those SMEs. And so what is the positive impact? So the positive impact of this is the teamwork, is the fact that we know, we're experienced, we have over 50 years experience in what we do within the team that we've got and we make sure that we pass that experience on to our clients so with us and our clients working together as a team then the end users and the end clients get the most professional system that they can get making sure that we use the best technology and the best processes and systems that are available within the UK. And what has been gained from this? Well, we've been going about three years now, um, and one of the biggest things for three years is the collation of information, is that 
I, I class myself as a solutions architect and I go into a company and I understand what the company is trying to achieve and I provide a solution for them to, to actually get to where they need to be. But one of the biggest things that we actually found out is that a lot of people don't want to invest in technology. Things like smartphones and data contracts and things like that, people don't have the capital to invest in that. So one of the biggest things that we have done is listen to what people want and by listening to what people want, we've actually designed systems and processes to ensure we utilize the hardware that people have already got. So I know you've got an award with you. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that? So in the first lockdown, um, sort of just around March time, we lost about 99.8% of our customers. A lot of our customers were from places like electrical engineering companies, uh, contract caterers, um, lots of companies that had lots of people that done things out in the field. Um, during the first lockdown, a lot of these people were furloughed um, and we, we lost, because we've charged per person per month, uh, we lost all of those subscriptions because the companies didn't have those people there anymore. So we went back to basics. As I said, we took lots of feedback um, during the three years that we've been trading. A lot of people said we didn't want to use smartphones, we didn't want to buy data contracts. So I said, well, what do people actually got? Every single UK adult has a mobile phone. Every single UK adult knows how to send a text message. So I thought, well, why can't our services be around text messages? Why can't I create what we do via a text message so everybody knows how to use it and everybody's got a piece of hardware within their pocket that they're able to use it. So we designed what they call text time and text toil which is a digital timesheet and a digital lead management system so we've just actually won um, the SME uh, UK Enterprise Awards 2020 for the most innovative digital workforce management solutions and it's actually fantastic to win it for all the work that we've done during lockdown to make sure that we provided our customers what they actually wanted. What else have you created with this technology that's outside of the box? We obviously had to queue outside supermarkets and you know we've we've got different ways to go into pubs and everything. So we created two new products as well talk called Text Queue and Text Bar. And basically, text queue is when you arrive at a supermarket in your car, once you've safely parked your car in the car park and it's pouring down with rain, you actually text that you're in the car park. It actually sends a text to the person on the door. It tells you where you are in a virtual queue. So you can stay in the car until you're actually ready to go into the supermarket. And then the person on the door just presses uh, another button, which activates another text. And it basically texts you to say you are now safe to go into the supermarket. So that was basically on that technology. We've done the same for bars as well, text bar, when in a pub now you have to leave your name and address and you have to leave your contact details for track and trace. So again, based on the text technology, if you think about most bars you go into, you've got a big list there and everybody's writing on the list, that's not GDPR friendly and that's not good for everybody. So ultimately what we've done is create a text system where you just text your name to a telephone number that's unique to the bar and basically based on the same technology, we pick up your name, we pick up the time that you arrived at the premises, we picked up the date you arrived at the premises, the date that you left and obviously your telephone number. So then when Track and Trace needs your details, we have it all stored safely and digitally that will only pass on to the authorities your data is safe. And what is the future technology that you're developing? We created Rotor App and Rotor App utilises all that technology and it sends all that information then via email rather than via text message to make it more cost efficient for the companies that do have the hardware that's required to power it. So if you have the hardware, we can provide a system. If you don't have the hardware, we can still provide a system. We have a solution for everyone and we're proud of becoming Solutions Architects. And if people want to find out more, how can they? People can find out more easily than they think by just going to www.rotorhub.co.uk or emailing support at rotorhub.net. Well, thank you, Sean, for sharing your story, and it's great to hear what's going on at Rotorhub. Thank you for having me. It's been a, it's been a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to tell everybody about Rotorhub. Thanks, Simon.
True innovation requires deep thinking and a bringing together of established technologies into an entirely new concept. Here's Amy to enlighten us on a few of our Worcestershire deep thinkers. Did you know? Thanks, Jess. Today we're going to show you some true pioneers from Worcestershire. Did you know? Morgan has been handcrafting innovation since 1909 and have an amazing heritage, bringing with it an exceptional mix of traditional craftsmanship and appropriate modern technology. Passed down through generations, the same craftsmanship skills that were integral during the founding of the Morgan Motor Company are alive today as they ever have been. Let's find out more. if they would let me have one of those. To this day, the recipe remains a closely guarded secret and only a few people know the exact ingredients, proportions and manufacturing process involved in the manufacturing of Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Wow, that's a tangy little story, isn't it? The Warriors has an amazing story to tell from a small local club to our very own Premiership Rugby Club, sports innovation and hospitality. Yeah.
It's amazing to see it's not all about the game, but it is truly about the people. Not only the people involved, but the supporters that hold them in their hearts. Some would say carpet is woven into the history of our county. Discover over 300 years of Kidderminster's innovation within the carpet industry and hear of its origins as the Carpet Museum. Tell us more. Such history right here under our feet. Our journey around Worcestershire showcasing our people and innovation will continue next time as we drop more pins onto the map. Just taking time to think about all the amazing people and innovations in the county today and of the past should really make us all feel proud. Worcestershire is such an amazing place to live, work and play. We are walking in the footsteps of some truly inspiring Worcestershire innovators and continue to build upon these foundations, creating a path for a bright future full of opportunity and ideas. Exploring the minds and where ideas truly come from and what makes us innovators tick makes us all a little curious. Let's find out more. Hello everyone, my name is Andy Flack and I'm a um, performance psychologist in this kind of um, iteration and also a psychotherapist and I've been working with people for 20 years on um, helping them develop healthy creative and high-performing mindsets. Um, Santana was set up really to help businesses uh, succeed and grow and be the best they can possibly be. And we believe leadership is the key to that. So helping the leaders to be the best leaders they can be. And in the modern world, leadership is quite difficult. So um, most of us have been through in our own lives challenging times where maybe we haven't had the confidence or the belief or we haven't been able to sort of do the things we wanted to do, but we've managed to get ourselves past that and go on and be quite successful in various aspects of what we've done. And we want to share the, that knowledge and all the, the things that we know and the tools that we have to help other businesses do exactly the same. So that actually, not just our businesses thrive, but the communities in which they support thrive as well. So I guess we're thinking about, um, you know, what do innovators have in common? Firstly, obviously, you've got to be fairly creative. You've got to have the ideas in the first place. You've got to be able to think big. You've got to have some idea about, you know, creating something, making something, or doing something differently. But the second thing, and I think where um, the, the, the actual kind of innovation, if you like, takes place is the ability to follow that through, to break things down into steps, to kind of look at your ideas critically, and then sort of revisit your planning. I've got quite an interesting example of that. They always used to say one of three Walt Disney's would turn up to a meeting. They'd either be the one that's got the big idea, like let's make a full, you know, a full-length um, cartoon, right? 
um, or there'd be the planning. Well, he would turn up and say, we're going to do this, and then followed by that, followed by that, followed by that, followed by that. Or the critical Walt, who would turn up and say, no, that's a load of rubbish, we need to start again. And um, nobody ever really knew which Walt Disney was going to turn up to the meetings, but <laughs> the, <laughs> quite often quite often he would do all three. And um, in, in, in performance psychology, there, there, there's a kind of strategy that we've developed around that, which is to kind of deliberately separate your those areas of thinking into different actual physical locations sometimes. So it's quite useful, for example, to have three chairs or three areas in your office, three areas in your house or whatever, one that you can just sit in and really get sort of involved with that creative, big thinking, sort of dreamer um, area. One way you can take that idea um, and in a different place in a different location sit and actually start to think about okay so if I'm going to do that what are the steps that I need to do to get there and then the third position would be um, where you would critically look at your plans and look for possible kind of problems and 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 find ways to solve them and then you move back to the planning stage so you kind of then move in between planning and critical planning and critical planning and critical and that's a good way to sort of take an innovative idea and follow it through to completion. Working in sport, people always say to me when they don't understand sport psychology, they always say it must be about motivating people. And I've never in my life met a sports person that needed motivating. They might need to know what to do with that motivation, if you see what I mean. And I feel the same way about innovation. I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, you're already innovative. But sometimes things can get in the way. And, and one of the things that we're acutely aware of at um, Zentano is how um, how mindsets work and, and, and you have a conscious mind, you have a subconscious mind and sometimes the stories we tell, each, tell ourselves, the beliefs that we've developed over time, our relationship with, with previous successes and failures, for example, can kind of tarnish um, how innovative we're, we're able to be in the present and that's part of what our offering is, is to help you kind of tease out anything that might be blocking you, blocking your current kind of natural ability to be innovative. There's a lot of kind of psychological thinking at the moment around cognition, the way we do our thinking. Um, and you've probably heard of this idea about mindfulness, for example, which is about drawing your mind very much into the present and very much being sort of um, aware of the moment that you're living in. But our minds naturally want to kind of um, think about things that we have done and go over stuff that's maybe gone wrong or whatever, or look forward to things that are going to happen. So it's very hard to keep your mind focused. And there's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of thinking at the moment that an innovative, creative mindset involves these kind of flow states, what we call flow states, which are related to mindfulness, very, where a person is very much present, very much focused on what they're doing, is enjoying what they're doing, and then the time just kind of passes. It's almost like we lose track of time. It's like a sort of trance state. And for me, coming back to this, um, the Disney idea, that, that, that's where a lot of the innovative ideas come, a lot of the dreaming ideas come from that sort of um, um, cognitive state of, of being mindful, being you know, focused and just allowing your mind to, to kind of... Because most people, I, I would imagine, who are entrepreneurs are naturally innovative and naturally creative, otherwise you wouldn't be... Yeah. In business, you know, you must have had ideas and, and followed them through. So you've got the ability to do that naturally. It's just a question of harnessing it and um, learning how to utilise the skills that you've already got, really. So I think, I think what does this mean for business? Um, obviously, Zentano, are, we exist to help businesses grow for the strength of their leadership. And we've developed a, an innovative business model called Connected Leadership. And what that's really about is, is making sure that we don't get bogged down in the operational. We don't stay too much in the, the forward thinking that we stay there because we have got to do some stuff here and now. But it's actually having that own, open, flexible, adaptive mindset that can, as Andy said, sit in these different seats and look at your business from these different perspectives and actually find the way forward. Bearing in mind we have a backdrop of economic uncertainty. Uh, we have um, all the ambiguity that goes with that. Uh, the fact that we've got society values changing around us, we've got technology 
driving our lives in different directions and all, all of this stuff that sits behind it. But how do we keep ourselves thinking and moving forward? And that comes down to what mindset do I bring to what I'm trying to do? And that tapping into that curiosity again, I think is really key. Um, so in Worcestershire, for example, we have lots of businesses um, that are very innovative and entrepreneurial. Um, and this is you know, characterized by people who just had this great idea and wanted to make it happen. And I see loads of those types of businesses that just have these people that want to make something happen and, and take us in new directions and make our lives better. And I think Worcestershire seems to be a place where that happens naturally. So in terms of um, finding out more about Zentano, obviously start with looking at our website. Um, um, we have something called Connected Leadership, which we think is the way that innovative entrepreneurial people um, need to lead their businesses. And if you want to find out more about that, you know, please look at our website. There's a video on there that explains it. Or come and speak to Andy, come and speak to myself and have a conversation about how can we drive more innovation in our business. And we'll happily you know, explore those ideas with you. Bursting, full of talent and innovative deliciousness. Worcestershire really does have a lot to be proud of and continued knowledge and learning about our county's history truly keeps it alive and inspiring for future generations. Who knows who already walks amongst us? We've heard from some talented and gifted people behind the name, and I don't know about you, but hearing their stories makes me want to shout from the rooftops about Worcestershire. Next time, discover even more about innovation in Worcestershire as our journey continues to our fantastic county. Don't forget, we're not here to support you on your own journey. So check out our website to find out all the support that's available to you. Remember, great things happen when great people get together. Next time, we'll be talking 